Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. EA are once again back on their business by practically leaking the entire next week of content on FC24. We've got a lot of SBCs, including a really massive player of the month, potentially coming up this week in this game. We're going to talk about how this content could impact the market, especially in terms of SBC fodder. Will it make other prices fall? We'll discuss that and what to expect today on FC24 on a Tuesday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's look at that tweet straight away. If you guys missed it, this is the content that's coming this week in FC24. We've already seen some of it, of course. Upgrade SBCs yesterday in the form of the Centurion's Crafting Upgrade and the Showdown SBCs, which, by the way, this car design for the Showdowns in the game is currently not there. I take a look at the Mudrick SBC, who is still right here. I did the other one for Kulusevsky. You can't even see the car design. So, Wara, car design from EA. Great job. I don't know how that's not in the game. It is what it is. But I see a lot of demand for SBC fodder in the coming days. With all of this content, especially with some of the SBCs that we know, with leaks and stuff like that, Centurion's Icon Player SBC, Centurion's Player, then I'll League Player of the Month, potentially Jude. It's looking big, guys. So let's start off by looking back at yesterday, where it all started. We already mentioned it. The showdown SBC between Mudrik and Kulusevsky. I'm going to say this straight up off the bat. If you're not a fan of either of these clubs, it might not be worth doing. Be completely honest, right? These SBCs are okay in terms of their price. The upgrade on Kulusevsky, in my opinion, is better. It just is so weird looking at this card and not seeing a car design there. He's like invisible. Kulu got the four-star weak foot boost. He was three-star before. And guys, I'll tell you what, he's got a finesse shot. His finesse shots are absolutely insane. Hit a couple insane ones yesterday in the one game that I tried him out. So it's a nice boost for him. And it is a nice boost for Mudrik as well, right? They gave him a pretty big boost in, I think it was dribbling and passing maybe um, over his base gold card. Maybe it was shooting as well. Yeah, 14 shooting, 10 passing, 10 defense and physical and seven dribbling plus two pace as well. Now, the whole reason that people are thinking about doing this SBC is when Spurs play Chelsea, which is this coming Monday, so a week from when this SBC was released, that's a very long time ahead um, of when the actual game is. Usually EA give us like three or four days. This time they're giving us an entire week to get ready for this game in terms of the showdown and the potential upgrade there. Um, you know, whoever wins the game, if there is a outright winner, it will be a plus two for that winner's card. So they would each go to an 87 rated if either side won. If it's a draw at the final 90 minutes when the whistle blows, it'll be a plus one to each of them. I don't think any weak foot or skill move upgrades will be a part of it. It'll just be a simple plus one or plus two overall like showdown cards are. And then if it does get upgraded, it'll probably change a little bit. The card design turn green around the edges and the arrows will turn green on the card. So this is our first showdown of the year. And I think it is at least. And, um, yeah, those aren't bad cards. Pretty big names. The price is a bit expensive, but again, like I say, if you're not a fan of either of these clubs, I think it'd be something that I would stay away from just because it's fodder right now that if those SBCs don't mean much to you, that fodder could go very well someplace else. Those are my thoughts on the SBC. Drop your thoughts down below, especially I did the Kulusevsky being a Spurs fan. That's a really nice card. I can't lie. Only one squad as well. He hit some insane shots for me, as I mentioned yesterday. It was a fun card to use, especially being from my favorite squad. So I'm a fan of that Kulusevsky, and I think he has a decent chance to upgrade as well. Now, this is the bigger SBC from yesterday, the Centurions Crafting Upgrade. You can only do it. It's like unlimited repeatable, but there is a limit. 73 times I have left. I've already done this 27 times, this SBC. You can do it 100 times before it goes away in 27 days. And the whole point of this SBC is you connect it to or your progress of those 100 times that you do it is tracked with the objective. Guys, I'm going to say it. A lot of people aren't super happy about this. Um, the number of completions that you have to get done to do this SBC and to complete the objective. There is no hurry with this. It's out for 27 more days. Yes, these extra rewards. It's basically like doing a normal upgrade pack SBC and you get extra rewards because of it. There's nobody telling you you have to get all 100 completions done. Just do it over time, right? And honestly, guys, this SBC giving you three rare gold players, the pack weight on this SBC in my opinion, is the best upgrade SBC that we have had. Better than the 75 plus player pick, better than any of the 80 pluses that we have had. I bought a bunch of non-rare golds yesterday before the stream. 
in my I'm not putting anything um, above 82 rated in so I'm, I'm actually out of, of golds right now I need to go buy some more this is the best one I mean you get three rare gold players it's actually an SBC that they've dropped that is worth more than do that is better than doing the regular gold upgrade because the gold upgrade was even better than like the 75 plus player pick in my opinion the, the weight on this is actually really good. I packed multiple walkouts on the stream yesterday. It allowed me to do the first hero pack, which I got Cahill from. It allowed me to do Kulusevsky along with my weekend league rewards. It is the best upgrade that we have. But again, I will stress it to you. You don't have to get it done all right away, right? That crafting objective is just kind of like a bonus. And that's the way to think of it. This is like extra bonus packs for doing this objective. And yeah, it's going to take some time. I'm not thinking that I'm going to get this done like tomorrow. Um, I mean, wouldn't be surprised if we had another upgrade SBC coming out pretty soon. I just think that the weight on that three player pack is actually really solid, guys. So I think it's worth doing. I think it's the best upgrade pack that we've had of the year. Just don't feel like you have to get this done like today or tomorrow. Like this is out for 27 days. You do get some nice packs in here, like an 84 double, a couple 83 threes an 80 times 10 and you get a 100k packer for completing the entire thing. So just take your time on that. There's no hurry, but the, the, uh, the fodder that you get from that is actually pretty solid. Plenty of 83s, 84s, and stuff like that out of that SBC. So I am a fan. Now, speaking of fodder, we got to look at SBCs that need fodder. And I want to look back at some of this, right? This leak and the stuff that EA put out and a couple of other leaks for players that might be coming as the SBCs. First of all, the biggest SBC that a lot of people are anticipating right now is this one. Now, this leak is one that I would take with a major pinch of salt because... It is not coming from our normal leak accounts. I can't lie. I think this is the first leak I've seen from this guy. Um, and everybody expects this SBC. That's kind of the word around Twitter X. It's like that's the word around the Ultimate Team community is that Jude has one player of the month. I would wait for one of our normal leakers, as we say, to post a lot about it. But people are already starting to prepare for this and expect this SBC to come out. This would be massive, men. This would be an absolutely massive La Liga player of the month. And it would make fodder move for sure. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But there's more that are coming. These seem to be a bit more believable, right? We've seen Rick leak a lot of stuff before. He's been spot on. He leaked the Danilo Perea with all the requirements, all the stats, rating, everything. Looks like we're getting an Ali Watkins SBC with a card that looks like this. This is probably one of our SBCs coming out during the week this week. This doesn't seem to be big enough that it would be dropping on a promo Friday for like team two. And also that he, the fact that he leaked it yesterday tells me that this is coming. That could something that could be coming today, tomorrow. Cent Centurions Watkins, like a 90 paced English Premier League striker is always going to move the market a little bit. Now this card right here, his inform is a very, very popular card on this game. And remember when it dropped off a lot because of the Callum Wilson that came out, I think this one would be an upgrade. Obviously, it's an upgrade, right? Plus two overall from an 87 to an 85. 91 pace, 87 shooting. So it's a decent upgrade. Plus two shooting, plus three passing, two dribble, and two physical. And if they would upgrade the skills to four star, I mean, they do, they've done a couple skill move upgrades already during this promo um, and the weak foot on Kulusevsky yesterday. If they would make this four star, four star, that would be an SBC I would think would probably move the market a decent amount. If you have, like, I think Raheem Sterling would be a card that would maybe be in trouble a little bit because of this SBC coming out. All I would say is be careful with your middle to low tier value strikers because if he gets a good value SBC, if this comes out on the market at anywhere less than 150K, people are going to say that's good value. I want to do it. I want to get it done because Prem strikers, especially English Prem strikers like Watkins, they make the market move. Now, the other league that we have is Foot Sheriff tweeted out Leka, which is a French goalie in the league on. Um, I think a lot of people are saying who might be another trap sort of situation where it's a cheap SBC for a French goalkeeper, which is always we take those, I guess. So hopefully this one's cheap. Um, and yeah, that could be one of the SBCs that we see here pretty soon as well. Now, with all these SBCs, right, specifically Jude or whoever wins La Liga Player of the Month, I'm still leaning towards Griezmann, man. I feel like Griezmann, like, had the better month, I'm going to be completely honest. Besides El Clasico, if you would have factored that in, but the voting was over before El Clasico. So, I don't know, guys. We'll have to see. I'm sure the Madrid fan vote in there had a big, big weight if Bellingham does win. But with all these SBCs have come in, we got to look at fodder once again, and this is the part of the market that just 
kind of keeps rising. A lot of people right now are investing in 83s and then also looking at the higher tier market, the 85s and above. And I think they're looking at that higher tier market because of what we just talked about, the potential for Jude Bellingham. I mean, maybe a Centurion's icon player SBC. That to me feels like if we're going to get another one, could be this Friday as our promo Friday SBC release. But fodder, guys, just keeps going on. Look at 85s, 8.3K, 86s are 13, 87s are 18, 88s, 89s, 91s, or 90s even, 52K. That's up. They were 46K Sunday night, Monday morning. So the fodder market continues to rise, and why would it not? You have a good upgrade SPC that is out right now that a lot of people are opening those packs in order to get a chance at packing the Centurions, but also trying to get some fodder and complete the crafting objective. And all those things considered, you just have a lot of people that are maybe getting some duplicate fodder. Anytime there's a really good upgrade SBC out, you might be like, Nate, wouldn't that drop SBC fodder? It actually does the opposite because people are turning in those untradeable golds from their club. And instead uh, of like when they get duplicates, like, you know, going and doing SBCs and like having to pay less for fodder, that would, that's what you would think would happen, right? What actually happened is people do get duplicates, then they have to go to the market to actually buy the cards to finish the SBCs that they're, they have to start because they don't like just quick selling duplicate cards. So actually when you have a good value upgrade pack like the one we have now, it actually makes fodder continue to go up and with all the SBCs that we have out right now two hero packs you can do Odegaard Marta Pirlo I mean so many other player of the months that's I mean Javi Simons and Alvarez are still there at the moment Kubo the showdown that we had yesterday cards that we have upcoming Blanc is still out I mean still a lot of SBCs right now that people will be working towards because the upgrade packs giving out a bit better of fodder now all I will say is there are a lot of people investing so you're gonna have to make sure that you get out uh, at some time this week, whenever it is, before everybody else starts to sell. Because there's so many investors here, especially on like the 83s. I'm hearing a lot of people investing in 83s, which is fine. That's great because in how high 84s keep going, 3.5K, 83s have to keep going up. Especially if we get another one of those like 84 doubles today or whatever it may be. Another upgrade pack like that. I think those will go higher. But just be careful, right? With all the fodder, I think personally, I would consider selling fodder maybe like today or tomorrow and then if it drops at all between Wednesday and Thursday maybe we look to get in like Thursday once again on some of the fodder that went up a lot for the hero pack so like the 84s and uh I mean it was the 84s and 85s that went up a lot for the hero pack and if those come back down again on Thursday we could look to get in because Friday the hero pack is going to refresh for two more times people will be able to do that again so fodder is a very interesting watch but for now it just keeps going Higher. Now, for the rest of the market, yesterday we talked a lot about our Monday flips. Monday flips did pretty good. Um, you know, the Tamori that I bought could have ended up so selling him higher. Uh, this is my most failed flip yesterday. I bought two Felipe's I talked about on the video for like 92, 93K. Listed him overnight as I went to sleep, expecting him to go up like 20K. I'd make a nice 10K per card. And oh boy, did that happen. But oh boy, did he go even higher. This Felipe Anderson, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, um, and Lacazette, actually, they went up a ton. And a lot of you guys are like asking, like, Nate, why did Felipe Anderson go from 90K all the way to 160,000 coins in like seven or eight hours, ten, eight hours in this game? Like, why does that even happen? Well, first of all, this weekend's kind of been the perfect storm, right? Really good evolutions, a lot of hype, really good card upgrades. People are just excited, I think, a little bit more than they were maybe last week to get on the game and to grind, especially because of the evolutions and stuff. And these cards actually have a pretty good pack weight. So I think when he came out into packs on Sunday, he got supplied a decent amount, right? We had the hero pack, which supplied cards a bit more. Um, people made a lot of coins from fodder investments that day as well. And then the next day on Monday, as people got weekend league rewards, a semi-rare card that has a really nice stat boost with 90 pace. He can play striker and right wing. He's 4-4. His play styles are insane. Like, all the reasons why I bought this card at 90k right before I went to bed, before I was expecting him to rise, um, were all the reasons that he went up, right? I don't think this is a pump and dump situation. I don't think he was over, like, hyped or something like that. Or I think it was just true demand and not a lot of supply because he was brand new to packs. This is something we saw last year. If you guys remember Robert Tone during the Rule Breakers promo, his card went up crazy on a Monday morning as well. And it's really just the perfect storm between a card that a lot of people want to use and not a lot of supply. And then it happened with Lacazette 
and Felipe Anderson both yesterday. So this is just something to remember that if really hyped cards get dropped on a Sunday, if there's really good content that maybe keeps their prices low from supply, the Monday turnaround could mean big rises. Now, this is probably what happens, right? The next week this happens, people are going to be investing because they're going to be like, oh, Felipe Anderson went crazy last week. Whoever's in the mini release for Team 2 of Centurions, people are going to probably invest, and it's probably not going to do as good, right? It always happens when nobody's expecting it, and like after a couple weeks where that hasn't worked really well on a Monday, we'll just have to see. But keep that in mind for the future because those Monday mini release rises after rewards can go crazy but for the rest of the market right gold sun i bought all those at 66 to 67,000 coins sold him between 77 and 74k so a decent profit there tomorrow's didn't move too much i broke even on him bought all those for 41 to 42 sold at 44 um i packed salah from rewards that was crazy i packed holland untradeable from a player pick and salah tradable from the 85 double that was nuts um also yesterday with messi winning ballon d'or Right before he was announced as the winner, his card price just for like 15 or 20 minutes went up crazy. He went from 68K to 90,000 coins. I picked up like seven, however many this is, like seven Messies or six Messies here for 70K. And I sold them all for 87 to 89,000 coins. It was a quick like, what is that, like 70 or 80K profit just in a short time frame. That was cool um, just to see that happen. I don't know what was going on. His card price is back down. Like him winning Ballon d'Or doesn't mean he's getting an SBC or anything like that. That would be sick. Even I said it on stream yesterday. Imagine they dropped the same messy stats just with the Ballon d'Or dynamic pick as an SBC. The same card just with a dynamic image and maybe a cool card design for Ballon d'Or. And they could make it like 300k like that people would do that and that would be sick and it wouldn't really change the game that much right it'd just be an overpriced messy you'd be paying for the dynamic image for the vibes right ea just do it okay stuff like that it would be sick even though it's like why would you even do that it wouldn't be worth it sort of thing but i don't think we're gonna see an sbc for it regardless frimpong was a good flip yesterday and then tamori was as well Sissoko, I made like 5k on and then these Bellinghams I bought yesterday in the panic sale as people were selling because of the leak for the player of the month I bought these at 328 sold them at 360 rare cards on panic sales and bounces are always really good to trade with but the rest of the market yesterday a lot of stuff is up like there's a few things here or there that are down I'm still watching road to the knockouts like this right now this price for Osman is pretty cheap I just don't know if I can sell them for too much more uh, than like 700k. I mean, Valverde was really cheap earlier today too. Uh, he was down at 818. I wanted one more undercut. That's a low enough price where I could have bought it. I got a little bit greedy and he already bounced back up. So I missed out on that one. Sawa was really low. The market's really good to trade in right now. There's plenty of fluctuations. You just got to find the right cards. Honestly, if you're looking at golds, you got to stop looking at golds. It's got to be the icons, the heroes, the out of pack specials. This is the time where you do the fluctuation trades. You kind of grind some of those flips. And that is where you can make the most coins in this game right now in the midweek of the market. Now, really quickly today, what could be happening on today's content? Of course, we have this to go off of. If I had to guess, SBCs coming today, I would look for either the Dynamic Duo or the Squad Foundations SBCs. And if you're somebody who either has leaks or you know something about players that are coming for content, watch specifically... Some of these MLS heroes, because like Demarcus Beasley, Clint Dempsey, Landon Donovan, these cards have been rising. And I think MLS is always one of those leagues that people try to invest in link investments for, for the squad foundations. So if these spike today at all before the content drop, I would sell because every single one of these league foundations so far has not been that good. So I would sell on the hype for those. I think that could be today. Dynamic Duo could be today. And then, honestly, guys, we have to get a player SBC with all the other ones that could be potentially coming between player of the months and then the two Centurions that we have leaked. I think there's a 100% chance of a player SBC today of some sort of fashion. And then I also think there might be another upgrade pack. I think I remember last year during Centurions when we got, like, the Centurions uh, SBC, the upgrade that kind of, like ties to the objective they would usually drop another sort of unlimited repeatable upgrade pack as well so maybe they won't this time since it's pretty early on in the game but either an 84 times 2 and 85 plus you know any sort of packs like that also could be dropped in the game today so watch your fodder or maybe just watch your non-rare golds because non-rare golds this week with this crafting 
SBC being available. We just looked at them and they were like 500, 550, right? When these non-rares hit 600 coins, which we did say yesterday in the video to pick them up at 350 and bam, they've really gone up a lot. Um, but start buying rare golds. Anytime you see the non-rares hit 600, which shoot, they almost are right now, just buy rare golds because you'll have a lot less competition and it's a lot easier. So if you bid on rare golds at 600, like right here, Johnston, no uh, no competition. Right now, you can probably still get the non-rares for less than 600, so it's not worth doing it that way. But if you need to buy golds because you want to do a few of those, just buy the gold rares. They're about the same price, and you'll have way less competition. So that is my advice to you there. But for the market today, I'm going to continue to trade in and out of these rare cards, icons, heroes, road to the knockouts. A lot of the road to the knockouts just keep going higher. Luis Diaz is over a million coins, which is absolutely ridiculous. Joao Pedro last night was low again. Look at him now, 470K. This guy is going to hit 500K. He's going to. It might only be for like an hour or two, but he is going to hit 500K at some point in the next day or two. He's just so rare. It is absolutely crazy. And yeah, just continue to watch these cards because they fluctuate, they move, they're good to trade with. And if I see 650 for Osaman, I'm going to freaking buy it. Even 660 because I can sell him over 700,000 coins. So that's the video for today, guys. Hopefully it's a good day of content on Tuesday because honestly, Centurion so far, good cards and packs. We have the icons, which are packable from those upgrades, by the way. And decent content to come by the way that it looks. But if you enjoyed today's video, guys, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan for Count. See you guys on the stream today. Peace out.